You know how it feels when you just yell at your kids, you just let it rip, you just give it to them and after you feel bad. And you think, I'm the only bad mom on the planet who yells. Guess what? You're not. Lots of moms yell and actually most kids yell because yelling serves some purposes. Now, this video is going to talk about the reasons you end up yelling and once you dig into those you'll probably find that you don't resort to yelling as often anymore because you've learned some different skills that you can use instead of just waiting until you're going to explode and offloading it. So let's dig in to the four big reasons that moms end up screaming or yelling. Hey, I'm Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. I'm an author. I'm a mom of five. I'm a language of listening parent coach. I am creator of Life School at Home where we equip our kids. I do a lot of stuff and my goal is helping moms have a peaceful, happy family life so they don't want to run away from home. And you know one thing that makes family life not very peaceful? Oh, that's when people be yelling. When the kids be yelling or the dad be yelling or the mom be yelling, it actually isn't very peaceful. And you know what? Let's go first thing into the main reason that people end up yelling and it is this. They feel powerless. So yelling is not usually the first thing moms resort to. Although sometimes when I'm out, I'll see somebody just, their kid will be doing something and it's usually something I don't think seems that big of a deal. And the mom will just go from being normal to being like, stop that, get over there, sit down. And it's very jarring, right? We're like, she isn't even being naughty, right? And this is, come, stay tuned for why moms do that. That's on a later point. But what happens when you feel powerless is that you think there's just nothing else you can do. You're, you're not gonna be able to change the situation. Nothing's gonna happen unless you yell. Your kids aren't gonna do what you say or they're gonna keep doing that bad thing. And the truth is, you're probably right. Moms who don't intervene early, maybe they're more permissive, maybe they're just wanting their kids to have some freedom, they're wanting their kids to explore the environment, whatever, they don't wanna micromanage, they're just like, you do you type of thing. But then there comes a point where you have to intervene and often kids just don't listen to anything else up until that point until you yell. Now it does not have to be this way. This is usually a behavior that has been learned where the kids don't believe you're going to do anything until you scream. And that in itself makes moms feel powerless because you're like, you could have just listened to me. You could have listened to me the first time, the second time, the 15th, the 50th time. You could have listened. And now I screamed and now you think I'm bad but you wouldn't listen. This is a type of cycle that moms can get into. And the good news is you don't have to stay in that cycle because it's a powerless cycle where you really don't feel like you're in control even though you're kind of supposed to be, right? I actually have a freebie that is called 10 phrases to use with your child instead of using phrases that are going through your head like, what is wrong with you? Why would you do that? Calm down for goodness sakes. Check that freebie out, I'll link it below. And after you have that freebie, you'll actually get a chance to buy my 50 guided prompts on how to step into healthy authority and that'll help with a lot of this as well. So yelling or screaming is an extreme measure we use to get what we want. And moms who yell or scream typically, not always, but typically were raised in a family where yelling and screaming is normal. So if somebody grew up for 18 years and never really got yelled at, they typically don't just go and scream at their kids. It can happen if you feel very powerless, but it just usually doesn't. And so that is something that you can explore how you felt when you were yelled at. How, just, just, I would encourage you to journal that out, go through my prompts that I have, figure out how that felt. And now, now I know if you're coming here and listening to why moms yell, you probably already feel bad about yelling. So this isn't to make you feel guilty, it's to understand yourself. Once you understand yourself a little more, once you get a better sense of the authority that you have, you don't need to yell to get your kids to do what needs doing. So the truth is really this, unless you're trying to save somebody's life, you know, they're about to walk out into the road or, so, you know, there's a shark, shark. I mean, I live in Florida, I grew up on the beach and I've never, well, I saw a baby shark once. Anyway, the truth is nobody likes screaming or yelling. We don't like it, right? So this is the first place to start. If you find yourself yelling a lot and you don't like it, don't keep giving yourself a guilt trip. Don't keep telling yourself, I'm just gonna go calm down. Oh, la, la, la. Because you're not, when you're peed off, you're not just gonna go calm down, right? You wanna dig deeper. We don't play whack-a-mole. I don't play whack-a-mole. I don't sit on the top of the surface of all these little annoying behaviors I have and tell myself how bad they are. I just keep digging until I figure out why I'm doing what I'm doing, 
because when you get to the deep level of why you're doing it, you can fix that and they all start. So when you get to the deep level of why you end up yelling, for some moms it's because they're permissive and their kids just don't listen to them. Other moms it's because, I heard somebody tell me this the other day, they're, they're doing um, they're not doing G-O-Y-B parenting, which is get off your butt parenting. Some moms just want to sit on their butt and the kids just don't, don't stop, stop until they finally get annoyed instead of just standing up and intervening, right? Oh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, there's a lot of reasons that could be at the root of it, but that's on you to figure out and dig deeper because that is the key to breakthrough. So the second reason we end up yelling or screaming is because when we scream, we're basically saying you have to stop and fix what you're doing because I can't. So screaming is like an ultimate or yelling, an ultimate expression of powerlessness that says, I'm not okay because of what you're doing. You have to fix you so I can be okay. Now, to a certain extent, this makes sense as parents, but it's one of those behaviors that people would probably put in the codependent pile. I don't know if you people even say codependence in parenting, but it's like, you don't feel like you can change the environment. You don't feel like you can organize life to be okay. And then you get set off and triggered and that's when you yell, right? And sometimes it means we yell when it wasn't even that big of a deal. We just lost it. You know, we might yell when our kids are kind of being too noisy, but it's, it's happy play. Even that might trigger our nervous system. You know, we haven't taken care of ourselves well enough to be able to be okay. We hear that noise and instead of being mostly at peace because we have regulated our nervous system and we go over there, hey, nope, too loud, go outside. Nope, quiet game, whatever it is. Oh. Hey, nope, stop. We don't do that. We just go right in and we scream or we yell, be quiet, you know, and this is a very jarring to the kids. So it can be effective, but we don't need to keep doing things we don't like just because they're effective. So moms might yell at her kids like, get in the car. We've got to go. Instead of just walking over, come on, stand up. Let's go. Or a little one, put your shoes on already. Instead of just going over, bending down and putting their shoes on. So it's like, we, we want to give our kids a chance to develop self-control. We want them to be able to manage themselves. So we keep putting them in the position to do that even when they fail. So we keep letting them fail and they've proven they're going to fail in that scenario. And then we yell at them. When what we need to do is zoom back and say, my child cannot succeed in this situation. They keep failing. So. I'm going to make some changes so that they can succeed. I, I hope you're following here. Let me know in the comments if you want me to give more examples or do more videos on this. I'm thinking about doing some videos on how people work, like why we do what we do, but only if you're interested. So something that is can be surprising to moms is that moms with firm boundaries actually end up yelling far, far less because they don't let it get out of hand. It, it just doesn't get out of hand. So yes, I mean, all moms can yell on occasion, but moms who really have clear boundaries, clear expectations, they're okay with their boundaries. This really matters. You have to be okay with your boundaries. You have to trust that what you want or don't want to happen makes good sense because you're the grown up. You got to get this, you got to believe this. Whether your kids are crying or popping off or gnashing of teeth, they're only little children. So you have to learn to trust yourself and your boundaries. So moms who can trust themselves in their boundaries, they don't think they're perfect, they know they're not, but they're okay with what they know should happen. They typically don't yell that much because their kids just learn they have walls and not doors. Have I talked about that here? Let me know in the comments. But they have walls and the kids just know, I'm not gonna go bang my head on that to get in the kitchen, I'm just gonna walk. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna bang my head over here. I'm not gonna break that rule because mom's not gonna let me. So actually the more boundaries you have, the less you end up yelling because it just doesn't get out of hand. For sure, all moms can yell at times, but the reason moms end up yelling or screaming more than they want to is because they haven't figured out or haven't gathered the tools to pause. I'm not even talking about in the moment. I just mean in general, zoom out and organize your environment and your life to where the kids can succeed without you needing to scream. So this is like two kids in the, in the back of the van who are always hitting on each other, poking, she's touching my foot, like her foot is on my, her shoulder's hitting, whatever. This is instead of just screaming at them and having to pull over, which can happen and you know, and actually 
I have to say to my kids like, do you want us all to die? You know, like, hello, the driver cannot be stressed, right? But one way to zoom out and fix this is to just separate people who fight all the time. Just don't let them sit by each other, right? If you have two kids at dinner who are always poking, you move them, right? So it's zooming out and organizing your life to where all of the areas that the kids chronically fail, they aren't failing as much because this is, this is why this is important. Yes, our kids need to learn. No, we don't need to pad the walls. I mean, come on. No, that is not what I'm about. If you know, if you listen to me for more than five hot seconds, you know that. But if we chronically let our kids fail, if we let them do things we don't like over and over, things they don't like, you know, if they, if we let them hit or be annoyed or back talk, be annoying or back talk or just always forget, they start to develop inner you know, thoughts that say, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm not good at this. And kids act based off who they think they are. So if you're letting your child fail over and over again, they're going to think the failures. So we need to zoom back and we as grown-ups got to set the scene for them so they can succeed. So the third big reasons moms end up yelling or screaming in public is embarrassment. This is just stock standard, right? You feel embarrassed, you know, you, 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 first of all, we really think other people are watching more closely than they are. We don't even know what other people think is naughty or not. I mean, sometimes we all do, right? But some people, and I know some people personally, can think, okay, for example, a, a wonderful mom in my Bible study was talking about her child's behavior during the church service. And she really was feeling like this child was being really naughty. And everybody else was like, oh, I didn't even know. No, that, no, I would never have noticed. That would never have bothered me. And it was like, oh. So we can think something is naughty that objectively really maybe isn't. And if people are around, we can get so embarrassed. And because the source of that embarrassment is our child, we can be like, do whatever has to happen as fast as possible to get them to stop. And then we're like, stop it. It's from embarrassment. And nobody likes to be embarrassed. So embarrassment, humiliation, mortification, these are very massive emotions. And if we feel these, it's like human instinct to as fast as possible, take them off of us and put them on someone else. So if it's our kid acting in a certain way, it's like I'm mortified, humiliated, and embarrassed. I'm gonna shove it off on you, stop it. Naughty child, if you do that again, I'm gonna or whatever. You know, these crazy threats that we give in Walmart that I'm just sure do not get played out, right? We want to offload that. I mean, it just makes sense. It's such a heavy, nasty feeling, this feeling of being humiliated, that we just want to get rid of it. And this often results in yelling. So one in, in this area, one thing I would think of, I would sit down and take stock of the behaviors in public that really kind of embarrass me and think, is this really that bad? And then ask others, do you think this is that bad? Like, am I just thinking you're thinking it's bad, but nobody else does? You see what I mean? Are we all up in our heads here? Because I, I want to say, when I'm around the vast majority of things I see moms yell at their kids for, I, it would not have registered to me to be that big of a deal. I wouldn't even have thought it was naughty. And I often wonder, like, if people in my real life are like, oh, she probably is judging us. I think it's the reverse. I think I am less, I, I know, I know it, I am far less judgmental of them than they are of themselves. And when we're judgmental and critical of ourselves and others are around, we feel exposed, we get embarrassed and we want to offload it. And we just yell because we're like, oh child, you caused me this. Pop! Now you're embarrassed. We don't like it after, but that's what it goes. That's how it goes. And of course we know, I, I believe these moms want to be viewed by others as good parents. They don't want to be viewed as a parent whose child is doing something bad and they don't do anything. I mean, that's why it's like, oh no, people probably think that's bad. They think it's me. Now I need to, I need to make sure that everybody knows that I don't think it's okay if my kid's bad, right? We all collectively want to feel like we're good parents and like our kids are good kids. And when we feel like that somehow is not being communicated, it's super triggering. So the last reason the fourth reason moms yell or scream a lot may not make you feel that happy but it's just true and it's that the screaming works the yelling must be working for you somehow now it's probably not working for you in a way that you like it's not working for you in long-term goals right but short term it is doing something so this is what we've got to figure out. So if it's doing, if the something it's doing is it's the only way kids will listen, 
you gotta dive in here. Kids will and can learn to listen to you long before there's any screaming, without a doubt. That's where you need to build your skill set, your parenting skill set. How do I get my kids to listen and respond and respect my word? How do I hold my boundaries before I totally flip my lid? That's where you need to aim. Think, is yelling, does it get them to obey? Or does it just relieve stress? Some moms, it's like the angst and the stress builds up and then they yell and then it's like it was a stress reliever. Okay, so that's good. You wanna relieve that stress, but you wanna relieve the stress in a way you feel okay with, that you don't have to go have a do-over later saying how sorry you are to your kids, right? And I have a whole video on a do-over I'll show you. But you wanna relieve the stress in a way that feels short-term and long-term effective. And we might agree short-term yelling gets some results, but yelling is actually fundamentally a short-term strategy. It's like danger, don't go there, don't do that. I have to get your attention, it's urgent. So when we find ourselves yelling all the time, it loses its effectiveness just because it's actually like a siren. And if sirens were just always going off, you just stop listening to them. I highly encourage you if you find yourself yelling a lot to pick up my book, If Mama Ain't Happy. This book is all about healthy boundaries for kids and moms. And I guarantee you, if you start getting some healthier for you and the kids boundaries, you will just yell less because there's just gonna be less reason to yell. I really encourage you to pick that up. You can get it anywhere books are sold. So the two biggest tips I wanna give, although I guess I've given a lot of them in the video earlier, is to intervene early. So do not get in the habit, or if you're already in the habit, get out of the habit of waiting until it's just too much and you have to intervene. So it's like you let them run around screaming for 20 minutes, 21 minute you go in there scream like a banshee. You know, no, if you know you don't like screaming, stop it immediately. And eh, we don't do that in the house, go outside. No, that's it, you stop it immediately, right? If they're doing something and you see it happening and you're kind of like, this is not gonna end well, and then you wait until it ends badly and then you yell, you knew it wasn't gonna end well and you didn't listen to yourself. Start listening to yourself. The minute you think, oh snap, this is gonna be bad, do something before it escalates. This means that you don't get to where you're so emotionally flooded that you lose it. And you're not alone if you lose it, but I'm trying to help you act in a way that feels good when you lay your head on the pillow. And the last, the second tip is similar to the intervening early and it's, it's, what I mentioned before, which one of my friends said when um, she, one of my coaching colleagues, she I think she has seven or eight kids and grandkids by now, and she said she was Googling some stuff way back 15 years ago, and she read about G-O-Y-B parenting, get off your butt parenting. So this is a big tip I had that's annoying. It's annoying to me when I gotta get off my behind too. But if you see something happening, don't, and you know your kids don't really listen to your vocal instructions, get off your behind and go to them. If you're there by them, sometimes kids need a physical boundary. The boundary needs to be physical. It's like, you can't do this anymore. We're gonna go over here and I'm not gonna tell you 15 times while you're ignoring me. No, because then I'm letting you not ignore. I'm just gonna say, nope, take my hand and go. Nope, come on, we're going over here. So sometimes you just gotta get up and intervene. It won't apply in every case, but I hope this video has helped you realize like yelling is just some, it, it's just a normal strategy that we all have. Kids get it, kids yell, right? They yell all the time. And so some of these kids are master screamers, okay? So it's not as bad as you think it is, but you don't have to stay. You can learn other skills to step into that authority so you aren't yelling as much. Much. If this video resonated with you, I encourage you to check out my next video on why it's perfectly normal and just that you're feeling ticked off. 